Well, hello survivors. The end times are upon us. The apocalypse is coming yet closer. We just had our first 7 days to die version 1.0 release development stream featuring Mad Mole and Rick. Lathan, of course, but the co-founders of the Pumpins were there to talk it through. It featured two hours of slow drip of information, some going to help rush through and summarize the main points uncovered. Hold on to your nerdy goggles. Let's start with when will it come out? Rick says that AIM is still as before, experimental in June, stable in July. Barring anything that might delay, of course. We did get a look at the brand new character system, which comes from presets to use or the ability to customize your own looks based on four different racial groups with multiple heads per gender, which can be further customized with hairstyle, eye color, beard, and so on. It actually looks very good. And bonus for them not going overboard like some games where you can change way more than you actually see later on in the game, which just wastes time and effort. Moving on to the new armor sets, we got to look at those as well, such as the Assassin Medium Armor Set and then Forcer Light Armor, along with a look at the new animations for movement. Mentioned was that there is one primitive set, five light, six medium, and four heavy. Each piece has a specific perk when equipped, along with a set bonus when wearing all of them in a set. And these perks do increase in line with the tier quality of the specific armor piece. With the new character, and armor sets, we finally will see hands properly, including skin tone, which is something that people actually mention in my comments, and any armor gloves as is appropriate. Some armor even have capes that move with the wind, and of course, some jiggle tech on armor to make them look more organically moving and not static. Not shown was that hair smashing system where wearing hats, for instance, would cause the hair to sort of confirm to the hat, which hopefully we get to see in future streams. As expected, light armor has the most mobility with the least armor value, and some sets even have a movement boost. Heavy armor, of course, is the opposite, slower but better protection. They spent some time talking about the look at system, where characters will look at nearby players or even zombies unless they were in active combat. However, they didn't actually show it off for some reason. New sounds for items and inventory are appearing. While there are some generics, a lot of items now have a unique sound when dropped around in your inventory. Rick highlighted that the game does run significantly better in his view, with improved performance due to needing to run properly on consoles, which has had a lot of optimization, especially for art. A teaser of Random World Generation, which they will discuss on next week, is the POI placement optimization, such as placing smaller, lighter POIs next to bigger ones, such as skyscrapers, to improve performance. Moving on to mobs, new stag and deer graphics, better fur, variants of the zombies, such as Tom Clark, Steve, Hawaiian, Party Girl, and we even got to look at the new demolisher. Oh yeah, explosion effects are definitely better. Boom. There has been work on dismemberment, though I couldn't quite tell the difference myself. Could you? Horde Knights have been rebalanced to avoid them ending after 30 minutes due to experienced players tearing through the zombies too fast. Hopefully, more exciting early game. There is a new challenge system which will replace the journal, basically working as a set of in-game missions on various levels from starting out of how to play the game to building your base and so on to more advanced topics, which the players can work through gaining experience while learning the game. It will be interesting to see how well this works for new and old players. Some of the challenges will be teen influence, such as party members killing things would count for your own as well. However, crafting or harvesting will be individual. There are new player chests. No longer do we need to start off with those multiple wooden chests with random things in them. The new chest is craftable early on, can be labeled and upgraded with iron and steel for additional inventory slots. This really should help with organizing your loot early on. Oh, unfortunately, no crafting from nearby storage though. Sadly, vehicles have changed, not just models, but even functionality. The 4x4 truck will now be able to hold up to six players with mods. The gyre, for instance, will hold two. A common complaint has been that the trader progression being totally overpowered with the trader rewards, something which has been toned down and rebalanced to give more of a focus to crafting and buying things. With less armor pieces, a recent change will allow for multiple storage mods per piece, such as a 3-pouch and a 2-pouch in the same piece to help expand your inventory capability. 
Some book series have been rebalanced or remade. Neil and Thread series, for instance, has been removed. The Duke Collector is now an expandable workbench type, which requires only primitive materials to craft, but gives you murky water. When you expand it with a filter, it will give you that blue filtered water. And with a tarp, it increases the collection speed, and it can now hold up to six water bottles when fully upgraded. Plenty of new lore has been introduced, especially in the voiceovers by NPCs, but more on that another time. Burnt Forest is coming back to both Naviscane and Random Worlds. No crossplay in 1.0, but hopefully in an update. It is complex due to Microsoft and Sony approvals are needed. Work is underway to launch the Xbox Store page, which again has complexities on the console due to their policies. This does include the discount for existing console game owners that they are working on, but no news right now. There is no split screen. There's no new textures and paints. There will be no animal husbandry. Empty glass jars are not coming back. Eating and drinking animations currently are not changed from previous versions, but it is actually being worked on and updates will be coming. There will not be any DLC outfits at launch, but as mentioned in the roadmap, there is a wardrobe coming which will allow for changing skins and cosmetics. It's not fully clear what this really entails though. Some armor sets are completed but not enabled due to not being sufficiently unique stats-wise compared to ones that are already in the game. This might change later as they work through how to incorporate, maybe as cosmetic items. No boats, and while there is a raft model, it's not clear if it will ever make it in. Next week, they will dive through POIs and random gen, maybe covering voiceover improvements, Twitch integration, new world borders, and more. Oh, and to close it off, Rick did highlight that while he's given release date to info, referring to that June for experimental and July for stable, his crystal ball has also been wrong for 12 years. So, does it mean we think that June is out, or is it still on? What do you think?